Hello, it's Jason Payne from Cold Banker Dean Hopper Realtors. Well, today it's a Hello, special video. Jason. Here is my broker, Miss Lisa Harper. And here is one of our best, best top sales agents ever. And that's pretty much thanks to you guys. So I definitely <laughs> appreciate it. But today I'm at the 2023 housing uh, forecast because, of course, with interest rates being what they are and just what the situation in the world, this is going to be an interesting one. So I'm looking forward to the information they have. My plan is to post a few slides of this and then do a wrap up summary of the information I learned today. All right, let's get to it. forecasts and it's not the best news you've heard all day but it will have some positive twists and positive ways that we're looking at a bit more of the long term. Now I want to start going back to I think Cynthia had said oh you're in a recession and, and inflation all the time and I think that's all my presentation was so thanks for the for the tea up there but as we're looking at the data our base forecast is that we do think there is an economic recession and I will absolutely mirror what she said a recession does not have to be as deep as what we saw during the pandemic when 20 million people lost their jobs in two months. That's abnormal. We did not have history that matched that. A recession does not have to be like the great financial crisis where it goes on and on and it's prolonged and it's painful and it really stretches out. Recessions usually last about one to two years and they do result in the unemployment rate going up. I think we all expect that to be the case, and it's not even a surprise. Even the Federal Reserve's own forecasts say to get inflation under control, we will likely see the unemployment rate up. And we know that jobs impact housing. And again, when I was touring yesterday, I had one of the sales agents say she has a cancellation because the guy, since going under contract, has lost his job. That is going to be something that we'll probably fight in the near term if I'm right on the forecast. I don't want to be right, but that's what we're making into where we think the market goes. Now, as we think about this, though, we also want to think longer term. So near term, and you'll see this in our forecast for this year, we think it became, it, it remains a bit bumpy, a little bit of a challenge. You're going to have to strategize. You're going to have to think a bit differently. It's way more of selling versus taking orders. But as we look further out, which if you're in the business here, you're probably not just thinking about the next year. Of course you're thinking about what happens, but also how do we think further out? What we know is that the relocations here to San Antonio are not as sexy as Austin. It's not the big tech news. But if you look at the job growth from 2010 to 2021, San Antonio is the 14th spot for the most growth overall, the 15th spot across the country for the most high income job growth. Austin's leading the way too, and that was another thing as I was touring yesterday, a lot of conversations of people are relocating from Austin because Austin's become so expensive. This is why that mega region matters to you. Yes, there will probably be those job losses, but the companies that relocated here did not relocate for just one cycle. Can you imagine the time and the effort and the capital expenditure to do that? Assuming they stay in business, they're still here on the other side, and they represent that buyer pool. Now, as we look at this too, let me get this to work. Okay, what we know is that with those migration stats and that number one for you all, we've come from this period that I call this, this virtuous cycle of migration and growth, where you have more people that are moving here, and then you have more companies that want to move here. You have more diversified salaries. You have more diversified home prices that people are looking at. You have more demand for retail, more demand for restaurants. This becomes a positive virtuous cycle until it isn't. And then you temporarily fall into a vicious cycle, which I think could happen for a while, which is just congestion picks up, higher shelter picks up. You do see that certain groups get impacted more than others. And that falls into some of the economic lines. But I do fully believe, and we know this from other markets, is on the other side that virtuous cycle picks back up. But again, it probably will take some time for us to get back into that mode, especially when you think about housing. And think about housing from a consumption point of view. And obviously our proprietary data is from the new home side, so I talk more about that than existing. But 
What we know is for every one home build we build, we create three jobs. And you all know when someone buys a home, they're working with a realtor, with a bank, with the escrow company. They're going out and they're spending money to furnish that home. They're ex excited. It's this big consumption mechanism. So if housing is slowing and people aren't spending that same amount of money, how do we expect the same amount of growth? And as we look at builders, we know that they're planning to pull back. I think that the perfect world is that they just build through a downturn so that we don't ever have any kind of undersupply. But from a builder point of view, why are you going to build it if for a while someone's not there to buy it? And what we're finding is that in Texas, we have about 35% of builders that are planning that their starts will be down between 21 and 30% compared to where they were last year. Now that matches up pretty closely with our national forecast, where we do think that starts will end up about 20% down in 2023, following a 12% drop in 2022. Layering in, Brian glass Hagel, he's one of our local experts, his forecast matches almost perfectly with what we have nationally, expecting about a 20% drop. From the conversations I had with builders, I think it may be a little bit more dramatic than 20% this year locally, unless we see those price cuts and those incentives actually prove to be extremely effective, and then they start getting back into growth mode again. I think we probably won't see it get there at least in the first few months. When you look at new home sales, we're expecting, last year we had that drop, the, the dramatic drop quicker, and so we're expecting still a little bit down more, about 10% for 2023. Based on what we know today, we think 24 resumes the growth, but you can't hold me to it because there are a lot of wild cards between here and there. That's how we're perceiving the market progresses, though. Now, as we're looking at this, let's see what the next section is. Ah, uh, yes, okay, price point. Yeah, so this is, if you want to get in a fight with someone in the home building industry or in real estate in general, ask them what they think will happen to prices this year because it is a wild range. So this dot plot is showing you the different big organizations that you guys know of. Zillow, CoreLogic, Morgan Stanley, Zonda's included in this. What is expected to happen with home prices for this year? We're seeing that there are some forecasters, economists, that think home prices will go up 5% this year. There are some economists that think home prices will go down 20% this year. And if you put yourself in a shopper's point of view, how do they know that if they buy, prices aren't going to go down 20%? And this goes back into that confidence element that I think will be hard to combat. But again, it goes back to some of this has already happened. I'm seeing it on the ground right now. If you layer the builders, 6% of builders here in San Antonio think prices will increase. 21 expect prices to be flat. 73% expect prices to go down. Now, as we go into the final section, there's just two slides here, so bear with me before you go off for cocktails. The first thing is acknowledge that we are living through the unprecedented times. I think none of us can hide from it. If the Federal Reserve can't tell us what their policy is going to do to the economy, no one else should be expected to know either. But there are risks. And we do think that there could be more, more job losses. We think that in a good news of all of this, the supply chain should be getting better. We should see some of the costs come down. I agree with the earlier forecast that said inflation should continue to go down this year. That's the intention of everything that's happening. Now, I think from your point of view, it's how do you educate on why it still matters to become a homeowner and figure out that why. Why do people want to move? Why do people need to move? And identify those that are still moving. The fact that there's still a builder that has people that has a waiting list, they don't have enough salespeople to take those orders, is telling you there's still interest out there. So trying to find those, trying to figure out their why behind their decision. We talked about investors, but also think about those prospective buyers. So we do, and I buy those every more slides, so one more after this. We do a millennial survey every year, and we talk to millennials and we ask them, when do you plan to buy? Last year when we had done this survey, we had had a record high respondents that said they were planning to buy in the next one to three years. We just collected our new responses over the past couple of weeks, and I thought for sure that number would have shifted, when in fact we had a new record high of buyers that want to purchase a home over the next one to three years. And the reason we care about millennials, largest living generation, there's a mix of those that already own homes and those that don't, but this becomes a really important cohort to be planning for. 
Not only do we have 33% that want to buy in the next one to three years, we have 18% that you've heard this a few times that are waiting for prices to drop. And from their opinion, when prices drop, then all of a sudden, assuming they retain their jobs, assuming everything falls into place, investors don't get there before them, they want to then re-enter the market at that point. And so my final thought is just think about why homeownership. Why does it matter in good times and bad? Well, one is you can look at locking the largest share of your monthly budget in an inflationary environment. Yes, inflation is rolling over, but there's some security around that decision. I'm sure all of you have dusted off the phrase, marry the house, state the rate. I'm hearing that all the time. You can always refinance later. And I'm sure a lot of you are working with lenders that are saying, well, I'll refinance for free, I'll refinance at a discounted rate so that you can feel comfortable about going through with the purchase. Locking in gives that certainty, but also asking the question, how long do you plan to stay in the home? If, the, if they're saying to you, I want to buy because I want to move into this house and then sell it in a year for more money, maybe you shouldn't be buying right now. But if you're trying to stay there, you're trying to settle down, you want to be in a certain school district that your kids need to be in, that decision still makes sense. Don't try to time the market. It's a fool's errand. And you're paying to yourself. Think about wealth and think about how generational transport wealth and general wealth comes from home ownership. Especially for our minorities, we're not seeing enough of that. The home ownership rate is still low. Can we change that? Can you pay to yourself versus paying off your landlord's investment? And this is changing. Uh, rents continue to rise. I would say at least rents are a lot higher than where they were pre pandemic, which is another reason going back to that rent versus own. Educate on those down payment options those mortgage rate buy-downs. I don't think people realize you can get rates back in the fours today. I don't think people realize how much negotiating power they have. That's where we have to help and educate on that. And educate on incentives. What does it mean to have $50,000 towards options and upgrades? What does it mean to be able to have all of the landscaping paid for, or half of the landscaping paid for? Educate on what's out there. Tell them to do the research. I know a lot of people that are shopping today are already actually doing that, researching and shopping. But I think that's the way that you can be in that case where you have so many people that you don't have enough time, just like that sales agent we found yesterday. So with that, Sarah, I will bring you back up and thank you everyone for having me. Well, I hope you enjoyed the presentation of slides. And the last 10 minutes of the forecast, I did not record the whole thing because it would bored you to tears because we've been out here for an hour and 45 minutes. But I definitely do agree with the presenter that the answer to the question of, is it a good time to buy as of January, 2023? And the answer to that is, it depends. If you're planning to be here for a long term, right now buyers, builders aren't throwing the kitchen sink at buyers uh, as far as like $30,000 incentives, rate buy downs, all that stuff because they see the demand has dropped. But once interest rates do go back down, like she was predicting that by the end of 2023 or early 2024, rates going back down, buyers are gonna pick back up and sales are gonna go back up, prices are gonna go back up, but those incentives won't be there then. So uh, if you want some more information, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I will leave my phone number in the description box. I'm a real estate agent in the greater San Antonio area to include the brothels, Bernie. So uh, yeah, if you like this video, hit that like button. Of course, I want you to subscribe to my channel and keep sharing these videos with your friends and family. All right, take care now.